With UFC 265 having concluded, Juno's Combat Club share its thoughts on how the heavyweight fight went down between Derek Lewis and Cyril Gunn for the interim title. Please remember to subscribe. UFC 265, Lewis vs Gunn results and post fight analysis by now you would have heard that Cyril Gunn is now the UFC heavyweight interim champion, after having beaten Derek Lewis at 4 minutes 11 seconds of the third round by TKO. Even though the outcome of the fight seemed to have been a foregone conclusion this didn't disappoint fans. The 31-year-old undefeated two-time French Muay Thai champion has been consistently well-rounded and technical in all of his fights up until now. Although his transition to MMA has been relatively short under the tutelage of Fernando Lopez, Gunn has been relatively cool, calm and collected during the fight. The 36-year-old brawler, Derek Lewis on the other hand and managed to get out of the starting blocks. Lewis is known for being durable and tough and occasionally playing possum but trying to learn his opponents into a false sense of security in the hope of capitalizing on his one-punch knockout power and timing. Many therefore saw Lewis as a one-trick pony, relying only on his ability to knock out his opponent, and plagued by several injuries and having difficulty in defending takedowns. Of course, it was for this reason that Garn was placed as the favorite to win the bout, given his technical ability as well as his impressive movement and skill. The real question was how he would fare under the spotlight of his first big pay-per-view event in front of a crowd in a championship setting. Turning to the fight, round 1 started off as anticipated with Gunn, measured and keeping on the outside and switching stunts occasionally in order to throw off Lewis. Lewis' attempts at a switch kick left him off balance and onto the floor. Thereafter, Louis kept backing up for the remainder of the round in response to the body punches and body kicks of Gunn. The round ended with an eye poke by Lewis, seemingly in an effort to throw off Gunn. Round 2 started off much the same with Derek Lewis attempting another flying switch kick. Gunn's weapon of choice was his power jab and jumping knee. Several exchanges resulted in clinch situations with Gunn proving to be more powerful in winning position Gunn followed with shoulder strikes and elbow blows. Before the beginning of the third round Luis Bob Perez pleaded with him to capitalize on feints in pushing forward rather than backing up in the exchanges. Round 3 saw Gunn utilize his leg kicks more efficiently, especially since they were not checked by Lewis. With his changing of stars it was clear that Derek Lewis could not keep up with the pace and the technical prowess of Garn. Visibly exhausted Louis then received several uppercuts and blows to the head followed up by knees. In the end it was too much for Lewis to contend with and he fell to the floor. Referee Dan Mergliata called the stop to the contest at 4 minutes 11 seconds of round 3 by TKO. As much as the win appeared to have been dominant, one cannot help but admire the pace and technical ability of the new interim heavyweight champion. He constantly dictates the pace of the fight never allowing his opponents to execute the game plan. Because of his relatively light 240 pound stature, he is able to move like a middleweight, dictate the pace and by winning rounds and at the same time utilize his Muay Thai striking to finish off his opponents. What's more fascinating is that for such an inexperienced MMA fighter he makes very little mistakes. He has a good sense of range and knows exactly when to capitalize on his opponent's shortcomings. Undoubtedly, a matchup between two former teammates in Cyril Gunn and Francis Ngano is intriguing one can only wait to see what comes of the build up to the fight and the galloplands that unfold in the unification fight. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Juno's Combat Club for more updates on combat sports.